Lake uh, Power Plant and a proposal to uh, provide a water treatment uh, facility for frac, uh, the results of frac water, and uh, the plant would be located in that general direction. First half of our program, we have Brian Collier and Amy Kaltenbach. Uh, they're neighbors of uh, the uh, alongside the road that uh, the the heavy trucks used to uh, go back to the power plant. And the second half of the show, we're going to have Kendall Reed, manager of the Piney Creek Power Plant, and Matthew Bruff, uh, the chief development officer for Clarity and Altella. Uh, Byron, you want to tell us a little bit about the concerns of the neighbors on this project? Yes. Uh, good morning. I'm Byron Collier, uh, a resident on the Piney Dam Road. We have uh, 20 families that live there and are very, very concerned about the the traffic that we presently have. We have from 50 to 75 trucks past our house a day, and we don't want to dwell on this other than to explain that we cannot endure any more traffic. The road isn't big enough to handle trucks. Uh, they ride the berm now to pass each other. We ride the berm to get past them. Uh, I just happen to have a farm on the bend, the big bend on the Piney Dam Road. That particular bend, it is impossible for two straight trucks to pass. They One will have to stop, then the other goes through, then, then they can pass each other. So we have to let one go through at a time. The road is just physically not large. It's an old country road that's already decaying and falling into my fields. And, then, and when that happens, they come with a, uh, a load of riprap or big stones, fill the hole, uh, and, that's, and that rolls into my fields. So that's how we're maintaining the road at, at present. Uh, one of the proposals is to widen the berm. Which, which means this, the berm is already used every day. In other words, two trucks can't fit on, on the road, so they ride the berm. So, yes, this would improve the berm for the trucks, but there still isn't room for them to pass. That would be our number one concern. It's dangerous. Uh, we've had accidents where, they, in my case, they go through my fence uh, but that's we kind of can fix the fence, so that's an ongoing thing. Um, maybe maybe Amy here would want to tell a little bit about. Uh, and I want to say this just very clearly: we are literally not against jobs. I I employ fifty five people. Uh, a dozen live in Clarion County, uh, and certainly we're not here to chase jobs. We just want to see this project, which is going to double our traffic, moved to a more industrial or commercial site. Uh, I'll let Amy share a little bit of what she's thinking, and then uh, we'll probably come back with some more ideas. Thanks, Byron. This is Amy Kaltenbach, and I'm a resident of Piney Dam Road. Thanks, Ron, for having us on your show. I wanted to reiterate that Piney Dam Road is close to the Clarion River and is home to 22 families and one business. Additionally, on Route 68 leading up to Piney Dam Road, there are 23 homes and a church. This would be the direct route for truck traffic from Interstate 80. School buses routinely travel Piney Dam Road and on Route 68. The local Clarion Elementary School is just over three miles from Piney Dam Road. We have to think about the safety of our children on these buses when we're considering this amount of truck traffic. The speed limit on Piney Dam Road is 40 miles per hour. I like, it is in my head and I think about how could a wastewater truck get stopped in time if it was traveling 40 or 50 miles an hour and a school bus was sitting there. I also think about our quality of life. Our life would be depreciated by the constant noise, road deterioration, accidents, potential spills, and air pollution from this truck traffic. Citizens will have to deal with all of these issues. Our surrounding municipalities that are to and from this proposed facility will be left to financially deal with the road damage and spills. Again, to reiterate Byron's point, 
We know the dire situation in Clarion County for employment, but this plan is only going to create six or eight jobs. We don't know that these jobs will even be given to Clarion County residents, or if in fact some of the residents here would be qualified to have those jobs. Is it worth the quality of life of over 40 families to bring in a business that's only going to create six to eight jobs? Byron? I'm going to just try to er uh, enumerate on, on some of the, the, the truck traffic we presently have. We have 60 to 75 trucks per day right now that haul coal and limestone in and then a very uh, dirty ash out. This ash gets distributed all over our properties, our homes, our porches. Our, many families can't even open their windows. Byron, uh, just to interject here, this has been going on for how long? The power plant's been there for quite a while. The power plant's been there for 20 years. And we're noted as good neighbors. And the truth is, we have never called the DEP about this. We try to deal with the power plant, the litter, the problems. Just to try to reiterate, if this would come, come to fruition, we're going to go from this 50 to 75 trucks a day. The beginning numbers that we were given is 300,000 gallons of, of water per day which could grow to 600,000. At 300,000, we would have about 240 trucks past our front door a day. And our front doors are 20 feet from the highway. And that's every neighbor. If it grows, and these, these situations usually grow, it would grow into 600,000 gallons of water per day in and out, which would br bring... 300 trucks a day on a country road that doesn't even have a white line and or equaling 1,800 trucks a week. So I'm sure everyone just thinking of that would be equally devastated as we are. So we're going to anyone that we can and doing our best to try to stop it. Now, now after the plant gets up and running, I understand that the uh that they do process the frack water, and then it's most of it's uh, for reuse at the uh, Marcellus sites, sites then. Uh, the, the, what we're told, and again, we are not authorities and maybe not even qualified to speak other than what we've been told. We're going to have some environmental impact people looking at this. But the uh, let's just say the 300,000 gallon comes in, they would refine or desalinate 80% of that, which leaves 20% that has to be handled, which is a much more, I don't know, I guess it's its not called toxic, but uh, there's two ways they can dispose of it. One is the deep water injection in Ohio, which Pennsylvania won't let them do, or landfilling. And our concern is the ash that spills on our roads and out of these trucks would now be be wet, wet down with this water and landfilled. So we're putting this toxic water back in our landfills, and when it blows out of the truck, it's going to blow onto our homes. My only point was that after this is up and running, these won't be empty trucks going back out. They'll be full trucks with the wetter. Co that's correct. It's pretty much now the uh, cold trucks come in, the limestone comes in, they, they dump their loads, and they not every truck, because we watch them, gets ash. And when the ash goes out, that is what blows, and this, that's our past problem. Our new problem is, and maybe to be noted, there's no semi-trailers now on this road. These tankers will come in as semis, which is going to modify or extend the problem. Are the trucks that take the ash out, do they have covers on them? Or is it just they have bed? loose. Now, in all fairness, some have what's called a Merlot tarp, which means it's a better sealed tarp. Others have just a floppy tarp that when they go out, it flops in the air. We, can, we have video of the dust and dirt, and we have it also in our water. We all have cisterns, not, not maybe everybody. A lot of us have cisterns because the water has been ruined in our area. 
That, that dust goes on our roof, washes into our cisterns, and ruins our water. That the dust is as bad with the truck coming back in because after they dump, it leaves the residue in the truck, and it just blows everywhere. So what would you like them to do here? <laughs> I, Besides, sure, uh, you just know, abandoning the project. No, very good. I, 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 how could we not agree with cleaning up water isn't a wonderful idea? We think it is. We feel, and one of the gentlemen that's on the uh, uh, in, uh, vi- economic development brought up, there are many industrial sites in our area some tax-free sites. We would love it to go there. Uh, Again, we're getting getting reports back from present operations that are very scary, but we aren't qualified to talk about what the plant does and what could be dangers. We had learned that as time goes on. But but our hope would be there's knocks, there's... uh, I don't think Trinity Development is a good one because we, we're going to be building a church there and we're going to have other development there that would not be good. But there are other sites. Uh, someone wrote in the paper the old uh, out in Brookville, the old Flying J truck stop, huge. It's unoccupied. Uh, uh, in Corsica? Uh, yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, I could show them... Five spots on Route 66. I have a, I have two locations on Route 66. One in Lucinda, the old Schmader sawmill, and then we have another area where we store mulch. In that area, there are many open areas that could be. The the tanker trucks travel that every day. Right now, I pass 30 a day. It would be a natural. So that would be. Our recommendation, we're not, we're not fighting against them. We're just, we cannot let eight jobs ruin the home life of 20 families. And I also wanted to mention that Altella is cooperating a similar plant in Williamsport called Clean Streams LLC. This facility is located in an industrial area. I ask our legislators to please go and look at the impact that this plant has had on that community before you even consider bringing something like this to a residential area. Please be aware of what we are potentially bringing to Piney Dam Road and the effects that this would have on the citizens of Clarion. Anyone who's interested can please contact us at pineydam at gmail.com. That's pineydam at gmail.com. Look for our Facebook page later this week. Please contact your legislators, Representative Donna Oberlander, Senator Mary Jo White, the Clarion County Planning Commission, and the Clarion County Commissioners to state your concerns. Thank you. Well, thanks for joining us today. It's, it's, it's good to discuss these things and uh, let, let people know. And uh, the second half of the show, we will have some people from the Pine Creek Project on. So, like, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ron. Thanks, Ron. Looking for an intense workout? Clearing County YMCA is now offering boxing class. Advanced boxing on Mondays at 6.30 and beginners boxing on Tuesdays at 4. Each class involves skills, instruction, and an extremely satisfying full-body workout by a registered boxer and certified personal trainer. Improve your cardio, strength, endurance, and more while you're participating in a great stress-relieving class. For more information, call the Clarion County YMCA at 800 764 You've seen the Total Gym on TV for years. Total Gym is the all-in-one fitness solution designed to help you reach your fitness goals quickly. Top celebrities like Chuck Norris and Christy Brinkley rely on the Total Gym to keep in shape. And now you can try the Total Gym 30 days risk for you for just $49.95. $49.95. With the Total Gym, you can work out all major muscle groups, even cardio exercises with one machine, all in the comfort of your own home. And when you're done, you can fold the Total Gym up and slide it under your bed. Now you can get in the best shape of your life, like Chuck Norris.
Harris and Christy Brinkley have with the Total Jam. Call now for your 30 day risk free trial offer. Call now for free shipping. 800 385 3169. 800 385 3169. 800 385 3169. 800 385 3169. Hi, I'm the automated hold system for your cut rate claims department. To get forwarded to the wrong person, press 1. To get put on hold for 40 minutes and then disconnected, press 2. To repeat your story to the entire company, including the cleaning staff, press 3. To do something that isn't stupid, hang up and get all state. The only insurance company who guarantees your claim experience won't be mayhem. Introducing the claim satisfaction guarantee. Only from Allstate. Dollar for dollar. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. Only Allstate has claim service so good, it's guaranteed. To learn more or find an agent near you, visit Allstate.com slash satisfaction. That's Allstate.com slash satisfaction. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Premium credit varies based on vehicle involved. Allstate Property and Casualty Insurance Company and Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and their affiliates North Virginia. Welcome back to Clear Connection. Today we're talking about Palm Creek Dam and a uh, new proposed project that we have that will be the merger of Palm Creek Power Plant and Matt Duff, the Chief Development Officer with Clary Bell uh, the company that's actually going to be treating the frack water. Um, this is the second half of the program. We had the residents of the area on uh, the first half, and I was just wondering if you'd like to talk about the project and the impact it might have on the community. Absolutely. Thank you very much. My name is Matthew Bruff. I'm Chief Development Officer for Altella Incorporated. Very pleased to have the opportunity just to, uh, to share some of the, uh, the benefits of this facility. Um, the core technology is a thermal distillation technology where basically we evaporate uh, the water and create a clean, distilled, pure uh, water stream. All of the contaminants in the uh, initial water is left behind. Um, we've uh, been very uh, successful to date uh, working out in the west and now in the Marcellus Shale over the last two years to purify this water. Uh, we believe the benefits are significant with respect to recycling the water and being able to reuse it, uh, therefore reducing the uh, demand on the, uh, the fresh water sources in the states. For example, uh, in Colorado, we received the first ever permit to put the clean distilled water into the Colorado River. It was a threatened and endangered species reach of the river, so the water quality obviously is, uh, uh, meets some of the most stringent requirements um, nationwide. When we moved to the Marcellus two years ago through the National Energy Technology Lab grant, um, we ran a program for two years um, demonstrating the, the uh, viability of the technology. And uh, what's exciting about it is that not only can we recycle the water to reduce the demand, we can treat it as an asset and a very valuable natural resource instead of taking it uh, and trucking it to either reinjection wells here in Pennsylvania, which are allowed, or to Ohio to be reinjected into the ground, never to be heard of again. In addition, some of the recent micro seismic activity in Ohio uh, has demonstrated that even the uh, reinjection wells may not be uh, uh, the best solution to be able to treat this as a waste. Is there kind of some kind of synergy between the power plant operation and your process that makes makes I get to what I'm getting at is, is is why are you locating it next to the Piney Dam power plant? There's some uh, wonderful synergies there. Uh, Piney Dam Power Plant uh, has been out there for uh, several decades now. They have a wonderful operation with respect to um, uh, being able to uh, take the, uh, the, the energy that they have on site um, and in the future we may be able to recycle some of the, uh, the waste steam available at the plant. In addition, their wonderful success of operating the plant um, provides a, uh, a core competency as we site the plant nearby to help run it in an efficient manner. Will the power plant people be running the plant? Uh, yes. And it's, uh, what I read on the website, it was a pretty, uh, you don't use a lot of equipment in the filtration process. Exactly. The, uh, the, the core technology is uh, uh, called Altella Rain. 
Um, it is a patented technology where there's no high pressures, high chemicals. It basically mimics Mother Nature. So similar to uh, the, the oceans where the oceans aren't evaporating, but the clean water is being pulled from the ocean, comes across to, for example, in California to the Sierra Nevadas, and is released as rain. Um, that uh, is the exact same process that we use, and what's exciting about it is we use less energy than traditional evaporation technologies. We need about a quarter to a third of the energy, therefore we can reduce some of the, uh, the, the effects on the, uh, the energy demand. In addition, uh, we can reduce total truck traffic because now these trucks are, for example, going from all these different well sites here in the, uh, uh, the Marcellus play, and they're having to truck long distances out to Ohio, in many instances, you know, over 100 miles. That certainly increases the wear and tear on the, uh, the infrastructure, the roads, um, the emissions from the trucks uh, increase dramatically versus being able to have a, uh, an immediate solution near the wellheads. Um, so net-net, on a, a kind of a county basis, if you will, the truck traffic will certainly be reduced. How wide of an area is this facility, if it's permitted and everything, expected to serve? I mean, how, how far away are you going to be getting trucks from? Um, with the, uh, the companies that we're speaking with now, we will draw all within uh, probably the 60-mile radius of the facility. Okay. Uh, Byron, would you like to talk about it? It seems the main concern of, of the neighbors, the people that, that live near there, is the truck traffic and and what types of impact that that you see coming from that? Is there any way to to uh, alleviate that or dampen it a little bit? Uh, yes, this is Kendall Reed. I'm the plant manager at the Piney Creek Power Plant. Uh, we've been at the, the Piney Creek Power Plant is a is a non utility generating plant burning waste coal. The plant's been in operation in uh, Piney Township for. Uh, about 20 years, a little over 20 years, and, uh, and we continue to serve, you know, we, we provide a lot of jobs in, in this area and, and put a lot of money into the local economy. So we, we feel it's a very successful business and does a good job. But uh, to get back to the, to the question, uh, again, exactly what, what are you, you're interested in in, in the the issues on the road, is that what you want me right, to address? Right. The, I guess they feel that the, just with the power plant, uh, that there's been a lot of traffic. And it, it's a small road. It's a country road. And a lot of the houses are built fairly close to the road. And uh, they're concerned that the uh, – I think they're concerned uh, about the influx of additional – Okay, what, what, sure. How that's going to affect their quality of life. Sure. Uh, just to give you a little history, the, the, the Piney Dam Road, which is the access road into our power plant, uh, over the years, you know, when the power plant was built back in the uh, early 90s, that road was, was uh, significantly improved because of the plant. We worked with PennDOT, uh, the, the, and we, we actually paved that road. The road was originally a dirt and gravel road. We, it was paved. It was... It was built up to handle heavy truck traffic. Uh, the road is bonded. Piney Creek bonds that road for truck traffic. We do substantial maintenance on that road every year. Uh, and, and we've, uh, in preparation for this project, we had a meeting with PennDOT and their engineer, and, and they confirmed that you know, the road is certainly substantial to handle not only the existing traffic but the additional traffic that we're looking at. Uh, we are looking at making some improvements on the road just to, uh, to, to uh, make the road safer for travel. And, uh, and we feel there, there are no issues. Uh, we've, we've, re we've done the engineering review, and the road is certainly able to sustain the additional truck traffic that we are looking at putting on it. And currently, the road handles approximately 55 trucks a day, is what we put across it, to, to maintain supplies into the power plant. Uh, the, the new water treatment plant facility will initially start out at about 25, and it, at, the, at the design capacity of the plant will be up close to 55 to 60 trucks additional on that road. So, uh, you, know, the, you know, the traffic patterns are, are managed as, as, as best that we can. We, we try to restrict traffic to, to uh, daytime hours as much as possible, and we, we feel we've done a very good job over the years of trying to work with our neighbors, and, and uh, whenever there was a complaint on truck traffic, of any kind, we quickly responded to that complaint, 
and, and managed our traffic very effectively. Do you take the calls at uh, your office in, at the Piney Creek uh, power plant then? Yes. Yeah, whenever, whenever we get a call from a neighbor, it, it's immediately responded to. You know, we go out and we, you know, we find out what the complaint is and, and, uh, and, and quickly try to correct that situation or make sure that uh, drivers are responding properly. And, and to be quite honest with you, uh, uh, Ron, over the years we have had, we've had more letters of thank you and you're doing a great job than we have had verbal complaints or written complaints. You know, I have a, I have a thick file of, uh, of, from the community and the neighborhood of people that appreciate what we're doing. Uh, you know, one, one woman wrote, wrote us a thank you card saying that she had an elderly dog that was her pet for life and the dog wandered into the road and couldn't hear and, and one of our drivers saw it and came to complete stop and waited for five minutes for the dog to move out of the road. And, and those are the kind of things that we try to instill into our drivers that to be part of this community and, and we've done a good job of that and I think uh, despite a few opinions, uh, uh, the facts bear out that we have been a very good neighbor in that community over the years, and we don't intend to change that with this new, new facility that we want to build. Uh, I noticed in the, uh, the newspaper that covered one of, uh, I think, a public meeting, there was a picture of the, the truck or the water, what, the wastewater hauling. That, that, that seemed really large. Is that, is that a lot bigger than the current trucks there for the uh, power plant? Well, I have no idea where that picture came from, or whether it was even a water truck. But, <laughs> but, but typically, uh, the trucks that haul, the majority of the trucks that haul into our facility are triaxle dump trucks. We do haul some uh, long bed trucks in with limestone, and certainly uh, long bed freight delivery trucks for you know, our various other you know, equipment and supplies that come into the into the plant. So we have we have both. Uh, the shorter triaxle trucks and, and the full-size semi-trucks on that road every day. The power plant, I, I, it's kind of a side issue, but I understand uh, for a long time the, the federal government has required uh, power companies to purchase uh, electricity that you generate. And is this phasing out or is the subsidy phasing out? Um, yes, uh, I guess the, the uh, non-utility waste coal gen power plants in, in the state of Pennsylvania all went into operation for the simple, for the purpose of cleaning up the waste coal. You know, it was a government mandated task to clean up this waste coal back in the, uh, in, in the early and mid 80s and the power plants that were built because of that were, were given power purchase agreements with utility uh, and those contracts were typically 20 to 25 year contracts. and. And those contracts are in the process of, of expiring. And as you know, as we mentioned, the Piney's been there for 20 years. We're looking at the end of our contract in the next few years. And that's really uh, one of the incentives for us to go out and look for other industry that we can we can uh, uh, work with to bring additional jobs and revenue out of our facility. You know, and that's really the the uh, the justification for working with a plant at Piney Creek is really just, there's a lot of a symbiosis between our plant and the water treatment plant, and you know, we feel it's a very good marriage to, to put a facility near us. And how many employees does uh, Piney Creek uh, power and uh, employ? Uh, right now, Piney Creek, uh, the Piney Creek power plant employs 34 full-time employees. Uh, and we have a couple of uh, actual full-time employees that work through temp agencies. And of course, uh, we typically have full-time drivers that, that aren't our direct employees or contract drivers, but we have about uh, 15 drivers that typically haul into the plant. So we're looking at uh, you know 50 jobs at least associated directly with the power plant, plus another three and a half million dollars of payroll that go into the local community every year. Any other issues you'd like to talk about? Thank you, Ron. This is Matt uh, again. Just wanted to highlight the um, you know call to action that the state of Pennsylvania recently had with the uh, burgeoning Marcellus industry with respect to um, dealing with this uh, wastewater. Historically, they were able to blend it and put it back into the streams, 
where it was untreated, and we're very excited to be part of the solution now to, with respect to taking this water, treating it to well below drinking water standards. The water is 20 times cleaner than drinking water to be able to meet the most stringent requirements to be able to uh, recycle it and reuse it. And we think uh, it's you know, just generally very, very good for industry and uh, being able to have the solutions here in Pennsylvania, being able to, instead of having to export this water, it's not classified as a toxic hazardous waste. It has a non-hazardous classification. And if you're able to strip out the pure H2O and be able to reuse it, we think it's just a wonderful uh, sustainability and, and towards uh, environmental uh, stewardship. Is, is the traffic. Not only can we have exit 62 primarily, and then going down that road. Uh, yeah, I'd probably the majority of it will be coming off off the interstate. Uh, obviously, there are there you know there's a lot of drilling south of us, so it's a good chance that there will be some some trucks coming from the south on Route 68 also. Uh, yeah, and it's you know it. I'm certainly not a road engineer or, you know, I have no experience in what the cost of, to build a new road to, into the facility that would sustain that kind of truck traffic. But from our perspective, uh, you know, it, it's not, it would not be feasible for this project to try to, to build or have built a new road to tr carry traffic into the project. You know, there's extremely large costs associated with that kind of work. <coughs> and we have a, we have a bonded, Qualified road to our facility already. Well, I want to thank you, uh, Kendall and, and Matthew, for joining us today at Clarion Connection. It's been very enlightening and given everybody a chance to, to air some concerns about the project. Thank you very much, Ron. We appreciate the opportunity. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, we also welcome our community out to our plant at any time to, to take a look at our plant. We've done several tours in the past year and and uh, certainly are welcome our neighbors.